And our dinosaur of the day is Ardonix, a sauropodomorph. <laughs> that was on accident, but I like how it worked out. This is a request from Paleo Mike 716 via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. So Ardonix was a basal sauropodomorph that lived in the early Jurassic and what is now Free State, South Africa, in the Elliott Formation. Well, what do you know? What do you know? It had a small head and a long neck and tail and a large body. It was both bipedal and quadrupedal, though it mostly moved on two legs. And its arms have features in between prosauropods and sauropods. It helps to show how sauropodomorphs had features that eventually made sauropods quadrupedal. And it shows that sauropods started walking quadrupedally much earlier than previously thought. So, Ardonix, the forelimbs were shorter than the hind limbs. They're about 72% of the length. However, the forearm bones interlocked, just like sauropods that walked on four legs. And the femur was straightened to support weight, and its feet were flat with large claws. So it had a slower, more powerful walk than other basal sauropodomorphs. And it had short, stout feet that were more robust than more basal sauropodomorphs. It's related to the closest known group of obligatory quadrupedal sauropodomorphs, too. Yeah, Ardonix is a lot closer related to what would become eusauropods in the distant 50 million years later type time range than Kaluma Luma was. Mm -hmm. So this is one of those cases where it's like shows origins is true. Ardonix also helps show the transition to sauropods bulk browsing. It had narrow V-shaped jaws, which were a little different. Sauropods later had broad U-shaped jaws, and that was so they could take wider bites. There's no lateral ridge at the back of the dentary, and that means it didn't have you know fleshy cheeks. And it could open its mouth wider for bulk browsing, so the beginnings of bulk browsing. However, the more derived sauropodomorph, Chinchakiangosaurus, had U-shaped jaws and fleshy cheeks, and that may mean that the wide cheekless jaw could have evolved a few times in sauropods. So this is all based on that ridge in the dentary being assumed as an attachment point for some sort of cheek muscle. Mm -hmm. And also the V-shaped jaws versus the U-shaped jaws. Mm. The type and only species is Ardonix celeste, and the genus name means earth claw. That's named for the large earth-encrusted claws, which were some of the first fossils of the dinosaur found. <laughs> I feel like earth encrusted could be applied to all fossils. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the species name is in honor of Celeste Yates, who prepared a lot of the fossil material. Nice. It was described by Adam Yates and others in 2010, and the holotype includes part of the left maxilla, and there's referred specimens that include skull elements, vertebrae, ribs, and parts of the limbs. They found two individuals. They were disarticulated. And both individuals are thought to be under 10 years old based on their growth rings. These individuals were found together, mostly undisturbed, so it's possible they drowned in a flash flood. Ardonix is estimated to be about 23 feet or 7 meters long, though adults may have been bigger, since, based on histological analysis, both these juveniles were thought to be still growing. And Ardonix lived in an arid desert with streams and oases. It's nice. At least I had some oases to look forward to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right before the flash flood. Yeah, whoops. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left. <laughs> 